You may remember Trisha Cotham. She is the state representative in North Carolina who abruptly switched from Democratic to Republican this past spring. Cotham's switch handed the GOP gerrymandered state legislature there a veto-proof majority. It allowed them to ram through a 12-week abortion ban that was opposed by the state's Democratic governor. The ban not only takes away the rights of pregnant women in that state, but it also hurts people from other southern states with abortion bans who had been traveling to North Carolina for health care. And this was all possible because of party-switching Trisha Cotham, who voted with her fellow Republicans for the ban. It was weird because several years before, in 2015, Cotham drew national attention for sharing her own abortion story on the floor of the North Carolina State House. My first pregnancy ended in an induced physician-assisted miscarriage. While I served in this chamber, my doctor told me that this pregnancy would likely not be viable and that if I did not take swift medical action, my life and any hope of future babies would be in severe danger. Abortion is a deeply personal decision. It should not be a political debate. My womb and my uterus is not up for your political grab. So what on earth led that person, someone who spoke out passionately for abortion rights and just ran last year as a pro-choice Democrat, to suddenly betray her voters? Two New York Times reporters did a deep dive on the very suspicious party switching of Trisha Cotham that, quote, blew up North Carolina politics. Kate Kelly, a Washington correspondent for The New York Times, was on that story, and she joins me now. Kate, thanks so much for coming on the show. You report that some big-name North Carolina party figures encouraged Cotham to run in the primary in 2022, but they weren't Democratic party figures, were they? No. The majority leader of the Republican Party then and now, John Bell, spoke to Trisha Cotham before she filed for the primary last March and encouraged her to run. And we also learned that the Speaker of the House, Republican Tim Moore, who was Speaker last term and is now, uh, encouraged her to run along the way, although he said he hadn't talked to her before the primary. So we know that from the very get-go, uh, GOP uh, sort of deep-rooted interests within North Carolina were backing Trisha Cotham. They say they didn't know that she was going to switch parties. They say they regarded her as a centrist Democrat in a redrawn district that was going to go to a Democrat regardless. So they wanted someone who would reach across the aisle. And, and to be fair, that is some of her history, is sort of collaborative uh, impulses with, Demo with Republicans on certain issues. However, you're very right to point out that she ran on a pro-choice agenda. She ran as an al ally to the LBGTQ community. Uh, she ran as someone that was going to give local sheriffs autonomy when it came to going along with ICE, among many other policy <clears throat> positions that she has now effectively reversed with her votes, commentary, and other sig signals. Yes, and you guys write how Trisha Cotham's victory in November helped Democrats lock in enough seats to prevent by a single vote a Republican supermajority in the state house, And then... Just three months after she took office, as we've discussed, she switches parties. I wonder, what has been the reaction in her district? Oh, uh, bitterness, betrayal, anger. And, you know, she's had some pretty awful uh, things to contend with since April 5th when she switched. I mean, death threats, her tires slashed, her car keyed, uh, abusive and sort of violent messages. So, you know, none of this is good. Um, but people are extremely bitter and feeling betrayed. I mean, she was the goat in a... Um, a sort of stand-up comedic Saturday Night Live type thing in Charlotte called Charlotte Squawks that my uh, my co-writer David Perlmutt attended. That didn't even make the story because there's so many aspects to the sort of rage and frustration in that community. And part of it, Mandy, I think, is that she really hasn't fully explained her change of heart. Her mm. party switch speech on April 5th essentially boiled down to there's too much groupthink in the Democratic Party. They're too process oriented. I don't recognize them. And they're nasty. They've been mean to me. And, you know, throughout the reporting of the story, I really tried to get her on the phone. I tried to get her to elaborate on some of the very specific policy disputes that drove her away. But I have not been able to shake that loose. And nor has any other reporter in the North Carolina press corps that I've seen. Well, you mentioned meanness. I just want to talk about that. You quote her former campaign consultant saying that she told him, quote, the Democrats don't like me. The Republicans have helped me out a lot and been nice to me. 
We often try to reduce political battles, Kate, to ideology or policy, but a lot of the time it's ego, it's anger, it's personal stuff. And I feel like we see that with Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin too in the Senate. Yeah, I mean, that's the reaction that I've heard from a lot of people in the last day or so, is that this seemed like it was about petty personal rivalries. It was about a feeling of personal injury. Um, and it's interesting, you know, the, the campaign consultant you mentioned told me that there was almost a very Trumpian kind of narcissistic approach here. Like, everyone's against me. They used to be for me. You know, she, she even before she switched stances, um, she was frustrated at not getting, for example, the endorsement of Planned Parenthood South Atlantic. But she also uh, did not attend the board meetings with that group that are required to get a candidate endorsement. And ironically, when she came into office in January, she soon co-sponsored a bill that would have codified Roe versus Wade in North Carolina. Now, think about that. I mean, you're quite right to quote her famous floor speech from 2015 that's very much of a pro-choice cho clarion call. But as recently as late January of this year, she was a co-sponsor on a road bill. And within, you know, three, four months, she reverses her stance on what had proved to be a critical issue because this state was very much a destination, like a very rare oasis of access for abortion within the Deep South up until July 1st. So I got to ask, Kate, in your reporting, did you get to the bottom of all this, what you highlight there? Because she's a progressive pro-choice Democrat when she's in the State House before. Then she goes out of office. She co-founds a lobbying firm where one of her partners was a major donor uh, to state Republicans and also president of a company that built charter schools, which she was once against. She comes back into office as a Democrat only briefly and then switches to the Republicans. You report that Republicans were pushing her to run. So am I allowed to speculate and say, hold on, was she a Republican the whole time when she was coming back to office? Do we have evidence of that? Well, that's the open question. I mean, I can't say more than I have learned through the reporting. I mean, we know that Republicans encouraged her to run and at least one prominent one encouraged her before she ran. We also report that some of her biggest donors on the campaign trail were two PACs, one related to dental professionals in North Carolina, another related to nursing home facilities that give almost entirely or predominantly to Democrats. We know that on the very first day of this term, maybe, yeah. which was uh, January 11th, she was one of the escorts uh, to to bring the House Speaker yeah. to the dais. And the other Democrats in that group, one was the minority leader from the opposing and party, obviously. The other two had longer tenures and were regarded as close to the Speaker. We, so there were all these signs that she was, at a minimum, friendly with And yet, Kate, sorry, sorry to jump in, we're out of time. And yet, she switched. And we still don't know why, she but switched. your reporting has helped us understand. Kate Kelly, thank you so much for your reporting. Appreciate it. <laughs>